Hello again, and uh, welcome to Our Texas Magazine, the podcast. And uh, we're here in Marshall, Texas. To, in fact, we are at the, here we go, the Fred T. Long Student Union Ballroom on Wiley College campus in Marshall, Texas. And we've come here because we wanted to find out about how people are who attend this college, what they um, have in mind, their aspirations, their five-year plan, whatever they want to let others know about their life, that's why we're here. And so uh, to my right, there's uh, Angelique uh, Cooper. Uh, to my immediate left is uh, Raylene uh, Hawkins. And to the far left is Brandon Woolley. Welcome to all of you. Thank, Thank you, you. Thank, Thank you for you, having us. Sure, sure. Now, uh, I understand that um, uh, Ms. Cooper, sometimes I got to do the Ms. Cooper and I got to eliminate that and just say Angelique. Angelique, I understand that you're the uh, current uh, SGA, the Student Government uh, Association President? Yes, sir, I am. Well, um, uh, and, and then uh, to my left, uh, Ms. Hawkins, I got to say Raylene, okay, uh, that you are Ms. Wiley. Yes, sir. And. Uh, Miss, and I see I go with this, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> with Brandon, you are Mr. Wiley. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, why don't you start first with you, uh, uh, Angelique. Um, what, uh, what drove you here? I know that you're a senior, right? So uh, how did you choose to pick Wiley when you had so many other choices? Honestly, I feel like Wiley chose me. Really? Uh, yes. Uh, initially, I was in college at Pulaski Technical College. It was a two-year institute in Little Rock, Arkansas, uh -huh. and I had received an invitation to be a part of the choir due to a friend um, referencing me to Mr. Hayes. Here? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. And so that's how I got to Wiley. I actually got the offer two times, and so on the second time, I said, you better take it because <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it'll be a third. So, uh -huh. Uh -huh. yeah. It was exciting. And, and so that offer just kind of said, hey, look, they want me. Yes, sir. They offered a full ride scholarship to sing in the choir, wow. Um, wow. the world-renowned acapella choir under the direction of Stephen L. Hayes. <laughs> yeah, Got to get that in there. Yes, Absolutely. <laughs> yes, sir. That's so. cool. That's cool. Um, now, uh, Ms. Wiley, uh, Raylene, what, what drove you here? Um, so originally, I'm already from Marshall, Texas, but I didn't, Wiley was not my first choice. Okay. I was so quick to run, want to get get away from Marshall, but <laughs> it was just, I don't know, like as soon as I came back and chose Wiley, like I felt like I was at home because I was at home, but Wiley made it feel so much secure, so much better for me. So I just stayed. You just stayed. Huh? Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, Brandon, you're from Austin. Now you could have gone to exactly. all of those folks, uh, those colleges there in Austin, but From what the small city of Austin, Texas. <laughs> um, I actually heard of Wiley College in the barber shop one time. Huh. My barber was actually watching the movie, um, not The Great Debaters, yeah, and yeah. then he turned on to Birth of a Nation. Yeah. And um, at the end of the Birth of a Nation movie, the choir was singing a song entitled I Couldn't Hear Nobody Pray. Mm -hmm. And growing up in church all of my life, I just knew what church sound like, the sure. music of church. Sure, sure. So I did my research on Wiley College and I um, started listening to the choirs and trying to get in contact with the school and get in contact with the current choir director. Huh? And um, after I left so many voicemails to Mr. Hayes and yeah. um, leaving uh, different messages for him to <laughs> respond to, he would never call me back. But my last period class and high school, uh, Mr. Hayes finally called me back uh -huh. and he said, man, I got all of your messages and you calling me was enough. I'm willing to offer you a full ride scholarship to Wiley wow. College. So I, I always tell myself, ne never despise of small beginnings because yeah. Wiley, I got here and I was like, man, this school is so small. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I was like, great things come out of small places. You just got to Put in the work to get there. Put in the work to get there. Yes, sir. Now, now you, all of you have been seniors. Uh, I mean, you have been here, and now you're seniors. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, so uh, what's your major? My well, mass communications major with a minor in computer information systems. Okay. Sir. And yours? Um, I'm an education major with a minor in Spanish. Okay. And yours, uh, Brandon? Criminal justice major with a minor in sociology. Okay. Now, I spoke to the mentor. Um, I'm trying to think of his name now. Um, Shaquille Dillon. Mr. Dillon, yes. yes. And he said, hey, ask him the question. What do you plan to do? What's your five-year plan? 
What's your five year plan? Hit it. Go first. <laughs> well, my five year plan is to advance my business. Right now, I own a digital media business where we create, help create content and digital media management for small businesses or small towns and small businesses such okay, as okay. Marshall, Texas. That's um, a niche. Yeah, that's a niche. Um, also, I'm looking to start my own foundation, the Dope Foundation. The, doing the what? The Dope Foundation. <laughs> yes, so, that um, means something. <laughs> dope is an acronym for doing our parts effectively and that's actually my platform or was my platform for um, SJ president okay, so okay. just want to keep that rolling uh -huh. and hopefully in five years I'll be sitting on the board of trustees for Wiley College uh, so yeah I'm putting it out there <laughs> I'm putting it out there I'm putting it out there <laughs> what, you, what you say Brandon that was amazing, that was amazing. <laughs> well how about you now what's your five oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you thought I was going to go on the road <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after I graduate from Wiley, uh -huh. um, I want to continue fostering my education through theology and yeah. seminary. Uh -huh. I plan to go to Morehouse School of Religion to get my master's in divinity. Okay. Um, but it's always been a dream of mine not only to be the chief of police, mm -hmm. but I've also wanted to go into politics if God doesn't call me to do something else. You know? gotcha. But um, since I am a minister of the gospel, mm -hmm. I've always learned and was taught to work up my craft and never let it die. And I don't know enough just to be enough. Okay. And um, after graduating from Wiley, I'm going to go ahead and get my master's in div divinity mm -hmm. and possibly run for the mayor of Austin okay. and or uh, chief of police. Okay. Now, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> now, are there any uh, uh, ministers in your family? Absolutely not. Okay, so you'll be the first. I'm the only one. You're the only one? Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, now, uh, Raylene. Okay. <laughs> Um, so my five-year plan would consist of, so I have started a mentorship program on campus, and um, my, one of my goals is to actually take it worldwide and try to branch it off to different campuses, different high schools, and make it um, more of an initiative for women um, and teenagers. Mm -hmm. um, I also wanted to, so my plan is to go to TSU and get my master's in it. Uh, education administration basically to just focus on um, the policy ref policies and reforms for education try to change those rules around because mm -hmm. I see a lot of like things that I don't like and I, I do want to change some things in education and that's what my heart is so well now it, you you have a, a, a minor in Spanish mm -hmm. right uh, and and then you uh, provide community service to uh, a, a public Park, school here mm -hmm. can you tell us a little bit about what you do then so at Denver Parkett, um, I go and I, we have like dance battles with the kids and- <laughs> Dance we, uh, battles? Yeah, we go and see them like, so if they, if they've passed their, their quizzes, their okay. star test, uh, we go and like give them parties and just go have fun with them. Make sure like, they have somebody that is kind of close to their age, but not really, that they can relate to. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm trying to stay young, you know. <laughs> so, uh, I'm just trying, I, I want to touch their lives while I can. While they're moldable, so um, that's, what, that's what I do. Okay, one more thing about you, and that is that you uh, began an, an organization on campus, uh, Women of Wiley. Mm -hmm. um, what, what's behind that? So, uh, Women of Wiley started basically because of my journey here at Wiley and how um, I started off. It wasn't as perfect as um, you, you go through, like, college it's it's not perfect and so I went through without a mentor and without like nobody being by my side to actually show me the ropes of school and show me what I need to be doing and as a student as a student uh -huh. and so I as I went through my my testimony of that yeah. I vowed to help other women not go through the same thing because I was like that's hard and I don't think nobody can go through that like, <laughs> I barely made it through so um I just proposed that idea and by the grace of God I it's been a very successful um, organization. We uh, mentor um, freshmen on campus. We mm -hmm. mentor seniors on campus. Like, I'm just a junior, and I have mentors of seniors and other people. So just taking this one idea and making it into this big mentorship program and helping to uplift others, like, that that's my goal, and I'm glad that I'm really pursuing it, and it's very successful. Um, I've, I've heard uh, comments from all of you about the, the role of uh, of religion, uh, the role of Christianity, the role of God in your life. Um, what did you have it before you came here, or did you have it and then Wiley fostered it? Um, oh, okay. Um, 
I, I grew up in the church. Yes. My mom made uh, sure that my brothers and I were in the church and raised in the church our uh -huh. whole lives. Uh -huh. um, but I do, I would say that the challenge of being in college and being saved is no longer popular. Mm -hmm. um, it, it is, um, it's more different. It's a lot of different things that it's, that's available to you. Okay. And keeping your Christianity and keeping your faith with God is a challenge, but with God, all things are possible. Okay. Yes, sir. And so you, you find the same kind of fostering, nurturing a value of uh, uh, God and uh, your uh, spiritual life also on campus? Most definitely be for, I also grew up in church as well. My yeah. family had a gospel group, uh -huh. the True Gospel Lairs, and so I grew up around singing, uh -huh. quartet, uh -huh. ministry, uh -huh. and coming to college actually helped me grow closer to God than I already was. And just sort of college helps you realize that you don't know everything, but it's also <laughs> a humbling experience, you know, to take to take away and to take yourself it's like college helps you put self to the side. Okay. And, and at that point, you have to depend on no one but God. Because it's times where your mom's not there, your friends aren't there, your you know father, anything, family isn't there. And you just really have to pray mm -hmm. to God and mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. just surrender. So, Absolutely. yes, I definitely believe that college, that Wiley College has helped me foster and grow mm -hmm. within my relationship with God. Mm -hmm. uh, are those the kind of experiences that you believe you would have missed? had you gone any other place other than a, a, a HBCU or other than Wiley College? Yes, sir. This is my, this is my second institution. Uh -huh. And initially in 2014, I actually dropped out of college. Uh -huh. And so coming back to college and coming here in that time gap between 2014 and 2017, yeah. I had a lot of like turbulence going on in my life. And I feel like Wiley College was the perfect place. Mm. I don't think I would have gotten at any other place, uh -huh. especially being out in the world before and trying to figure things out. Sure. Wiley definitely played a part in molding me as a as a young woman. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, 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 Brandon, can you name an experience here that you don't believe you would have gotten any other place, um, any other college? I think the most beautiful thing about Wiley that I found out personally was that the faculty and the staff members are here to help us for real. Like they're not just there to host a political title or position, <laughs> but they know they know what it's like to be a college student okay. and the frustrations that we go through. And okay. I think okay. the most beautiful thing about this particular institution is that the faculty and the staff and everybody else who works for this institution is willing to hold your hand and make sure you're okay and checking up on you and being sure that um, you as a college student, especially a wildly night, will be just fine. Mm -hmm. That they won't leave you stuck in darkness and they will make sure that you can see the light for yourself. Can you, can you um, express a moment when you either had the epiphany of that or you can relate an experience that you had with uh, an instructor, a, a course? Or... I think Raylene is the perfect candidate for the answer, for that question. Um, so I've had a lot of run-ins with my teachers, not run-ins like negatively, but like as far as them being there. Um, I had teachers like give me their like number and like, hey, if you need me, call mm -hmm. me. Like, I don't want you to feel like you're alone in this. I don't want you to feel like you have to go through something by yourself. It's been a lot of, and you sometimes you don't even know that you have that faculty and staff are on you behind your back. Like they, <laughs> they, they really be watching and like, they, they be, I know what you got. Like, so it's like it, it feels good to feel protected as well because you know. They, they always they always watch me they always have your back and even if you like uh, you need anything or you may be going through something it's plenty of people on campus that are, that are willing to talk to you and they're willing to hold your hand like he said and um, do that I know one particular for me uh, is Miss Taylor Hilton yes. she I've known her before I got to Wally like she put she pushed Wally on me so much <laughs> like she was like you going to Wally I was like no I don't want to go to Wally so she's, and I finally got here. And ever since then, she's been the best mentor I've ever had. Like anything I'm crying or anything that's going on in my life is she's there. That's one of the person people that I go to um, that I'm very thankful for. And it's one big happy family. It is. Like like everybody is your uncle, your aunt, your yes. cousin, your nephew, everybody is. Mm -hmm. We call President Fulton our uncle. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's Uncle Fulton. Yeah, I'm yeah. Okay. <laughs> 
one other thing about uh, your uh, religious interests, uh, uh, Brandon. You are a, a minister at uh, Friendship Missionary uh, Baptist yes, in, in Longview. Yes, now, that's sir. a few miles down the road. Yes, sir. I'm actually, so my pastor yeah. in Austin, Dr. G.B. Clark, he's the pastor of Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. He recommended me to go to this church in Longview. Okay. And um, after going there, he wanted to be ensure that um, as a young minister that I have some place to grow. Okay. And um, being there, I got active in that church and um, I came back to campus and now I'm currently the president of the Impact Movement here on campus and we're about young people being serious about God and moving the acts of Christ to everybody even when it's unpopular mm -hmm. in our current generation. Is that a group of men and women? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. Okay. Um, was it difficult to start? Um, it, was, it was very difficult. Um, I believe that um, Impact was an was a organization that was always serious about God, but I believe that we could do something more oh, okay. and not just a norm about God. Okay. So we partnered with this year yeah. the Impact Movement, which is a national uh, campus ministry-wide organization. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the Impact Movement? The Impact Movement is uh, based upon HBCUs, okay. and um, they collab with different organizations on campus to make sure that everyone is being serious about the acts of Christ together. Okay. And being a part of the Impact Movement, we host conferences together. Like the most recent one we had was in Atlanta, Georgia, and we had a big united conference together, learning growing and experiencing the acts of Christ. Okay. okay. Yes. All right. um, now, uh, Angelique, you had something uh, last year that you mm -hmm. attended, uh, a, a certain kind of summit, uh, innovation summit. Yes, Can you sir. tell us a little bit about it and, and why you uh, got to go there? Well, I got to go there by the grace of God. No, but honestly, it was <laughs> it was a lot of it was a lot of people that applied. I think uh -huh. it was over like a thousand students that applied, and they only chose 150. So that's a big deal. Yes, sir. That's just over. That's about 15. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, so and that's nationwide. Yes, sir. Nationwide. Okay. So uh -huh. it was the UNCF Innovation Summit. And we went to Silicon Valley, California, mm -hmm. where we got to tour top technological companies such as Google, mm -hmm. uh, Microsoft, yeah. so many, uh, Pixar, sure, sure. Net, that NetApp, um, that's this just to name a few. Sure, sure. But that opportunity came about by being at a UNCF institution such as Wiley College mm -hmm. and being a minor in computer information systems yeah, yeah. and so that just sort of broke the door or knocked the door down and opened the door for me to go to Detroit which is quick and loans um, externship and so it was a it was a great experience we just got to meet a lot of a lot of rich people <laughs> <laughs> well, now, well now other than the, they're, they're having a, you know the money um, was there something else about being in that group with those uh, folks that you came away thinking, hey, this is something I can do. Yes, sir. The number one mantra in Silicon Valley was be your authentic self. Mm -hmm. And that really stuck with me because in places where I didn't feel like I was accepted or I didn't have a seat, a seat at the table, yeah. being there showed me that just as well as any other demographic can do it, mm -hmm. I can as well. And that's something that I that I believe has been the torch in my life and everything that I try to, to um, stride after. Okay, did you see many black women? Yes, sir, it was it was a lot of black women in amongst the cohort, Yes. but in positions, no. Okay. It wasn't many, but they tried to pull every black person they had <laughs> in, the, in the building. <laughs> like, look, even if you're a janitor, come talk to them. <laughs> so that's something that they really tried to promote, um, just promoting, Black t blacks in technology, black-owned businesses, just trying to trying to make it to where we know that we deserve mm -hmm. generational wealth, that we deserve to be able to pass something down to our children, that we deserve a seat at the table. Mm -hmm. um, this is um, uh, to all of you. Um, what do you believe? What do you believe um, that a lot of people aren't aware of? young people who are going to college do they have aspirations uh, are they just these folks who don't know it are they just missing it because it's not in the news uh, they don't know anybody who's talking about the aspirations of uh, young black uh, 
uh, scholars at uh, at college? Honestly, I feel I feel like when we look I, I'm, at I'm coming to Tulane. Okay. <laughs> I feel like when we look at college, as far as the promotion of college, huh. many would say. Okay, college is something that costs too much, or isn't it's not necessary. A lot of people love to argue you don't need college to be successful, mm -hmm. but you need college to grow. Absolutely. And in things and ways that you're gonna grow in life, if you don't go to college, you're gonna miss that growth. And so I would like to believe that the promotion of the growth in college is not only just saying you need a college to get a job, it's something that we can change as a culture, as a race, to show people that, hey, if it weren't for me coming to college, I probably wouldn't be have these aspirations to be a mayor of Austin. I wouldn't have these aspirations to start a women empowerment program. I wouldn't have the aspirations to go and apply for things that I feel like I'm not worthy of. So mm -hmm. I think college is something that really shows you and promotes growth and that's something we have to promote more of Absolutely. not just the accolades not just the grades not just the positions but actually showing people that college is where you grow and if you skip out on this part of your life you're gonna you know you're really gonna have to take that growth it probably towards the end of the road <laughs> <laughs> what, what now Raylene what can you <laughs> what, what can you add about it?